The story, set in 1911, begins with Professor George's adventurous journey through the Upper Amazon. Aboard a boat, George finds himself in danger as they approach a turbulent fountain, narrowly avoiding disaster. His boat containing vital materials capsizes, leaving him floating in the water. While he and the local boatman manage to reach the riverbank, George loses all his belongings except for one carefully wrapped item. Meanwhile, in England, Edward, a columnist for the Daily Gazette, is instructed by his boss McCarthy to attend a lecture on dinosaurs at the National History Museum and write a report on it. Edward's knowledge of the event stems from his girlfriend Gladys, who informs him that her father, Lingworth, is the evening's organiser. During the lecture, Edward's attention is drawn more towards Gladys's fascination with Lord Roxton, a celebrated hunter recently returned from Africa. The lecture, led by Professor Summerley, a rival of George, becomes contentious when George unexpectedly interrupts. The two professors engage in a teasing exchange, with George showcasing a pterosaur's forearm he claims to have recently killed. Summerley dismisses it as a fake, but George insists it's real and proposes an expedition to the Amazon rainforest to discover the pterosaur's lair. His outrageous claim draws ridicule from Lingworth, but Roxton, intrigued by the danger, offers to fund most of the expedition. Edward, eager for adventure, volunteers to join, persuading George by offering to cover the remaining costs through the Gazette, despite McArdle's reluctance. Just before the expedition's departure, Summerley decides to join, insisting on the presence of a proper scientist. Edward's romantic aspirations are dashed when Gladys refuses his marriage proposal, seeking a more heroic partner. Undeterred, Edward bids her farewell with a kiss as the ship sets sail. On board, George reveals their destination, guided by a map created by Portuguese explorer Lois. After a seven-week journey, they arrive at a mission station run by Reverend Theo, marking the edge of civilization. There, they meet Agnes, Theo's adoptive daughter, orphaned when her parents died. A lively dinner ensues, with the group debating various perspectives on Earth's history. The following morning, George suggests that Agnes join the expedition, citing her knowledge of local plants and animals. Despite Roxton's initial objections, citing her gender as a potential hindrance, the group ultimately agrees to include her, especially after she expresses her desire to participate. Together, they embark deeper into the Amazon forest, journeying in small boats towards an uncertain and potentially risky adventure. As the expedition progresses, their journey brings them into contact with the Amahuaca cannibals, who, to their relief, show no interest in the explorers. Throughout their journey, Edward diligently records every detail of their adventure. Venturing further, George guides the team through a secret tributary, which he describes as a private gateway into the unknown. This new path, however, alarms their local boat drivers, who are deeply superstitious and fear the presence of evil spirits known as Kuripuri in this secluded part of the forest. Their their fears are heightened when they sense they are being watched by the local inhabitants. That night, the group sets up camp, but a mishap involving Edward and a booby trap causes a commotion. The incident terrifies the locals, convinced of the Kurupuri's presence, prompting them to flee and abandon the group in the dense, foreboding jungle. Come morning, the group faces the daunting task of carrying their supplies without the aid of the local boatman. In a surprising turn of events, Reverend Theo emerges, revealing that he had been following them. Theo advises the group to head northeast, suggesting it as an easier route than their initial plan to travel north. Despite some skepticism, the group decides to follow Theo's guidance. Their journey leads them to a long sought after plateau, lending credibility to their mission's objective. Exploring further, they venture into a cave system within the plateau, where they stumble upon ancient paintings depicting dinosaurs. Summerly, ever the skeptic, questions their authenticity. However, the group's exit from the cave is stopped when they discover it blocked by rocks, with Roxton identifying traces of powder marks, indicating someone had intentionally sealed the exit. The expedition's challenges continue. While the group is momentarily distracted by a butterfly, a pterosaur swoops down and steals their food. George identifies the creature as a dinosaur, but Theo, witnessing the actual creature, refuses to believe it. Exhausted yet determined, the group eventually finds a way to the top of the plateau. However, they are confronted with a daunting gap separating them from their destination. Roxton and Edward resourcefully chop down a tree to create a makeshift bridge, with Roxton securing a rope for safer crossing. Everyone, except Theo, manages to cross the bridge, but Theo, in a bewildering act, destroys the bridge, stranding Roxton. In a desperate struggle, Roxton narrowly avoids falling and confronts Theo, who ultimately decides not to sever the rope. The group is left puzzled by Theo's actions and continues their journey. As the group continues their expedition, they make camp amidst a landscape filled with unfamiliar 
familiar trees and ferns. Edward, in need of water, ventures out. During his search, he encounters a baby dinosaur. Initially cautious, Edward realizes it is a herbivore and feeds it a flower. Curiously, he follows the baby dinosaur back to the camp, where the rest of the group is stunned to see its mother. This sighting finally convinces Summerlee, who had been skeptical throughout the journey, that they are indeed witnessing creatures thought to be extinct. The day takes a grim turn when Roxton returns, having killed one of the baby dinosaurs for their meal. The following morning, the group discovers the lair of the pterosaurs near a steam source. They observe the pterosaurs feeding their young, a behavior that surprises George due to its atypical nature for reptiles. Summerlee, intrigued, approaches the lair, prompting an attack by the pterosaurs. He is thrown to the ground, sustaining shoulder injuries. The group owes their escape to Roxton, who fires at the pterosaurs, driving them away. At night, the group fends off an attack from another dinosaur using fire. The next day, Edward climbs a tree and spots a lake, suggesting a potential source of fresh water. As Summerlee, still nursing his injuries, criticizes George for leading them on this dangerous journey, George maintains his goal is to reveal the truth. Edward's discovery is interrupted when he is attacked by an ape man, resulting in him falling from the tree. The group is left puzzled by these creatures, but decides to press forward. Upon reaching the lake, Edward names it Lake Gladys. Later, while Edward and Agnes converse, they are chased by a dinosaur, leading them through the woods until they fall into a large trap. The pursuing dinosaur also falls into the trap and dies, while Edward and Agnes survive. The question of who set such a large trap looms over them. Hearing gunshots, they investigate and find Roxton, who has killed one of the ape men. Roxton informs them that the ape men have captured the professors. As they arm themselves, they notice canoes on the lake. Agnes suggests these people might assist them, but Roxton is skeptical, especially if the native Indians are hostile. Meanwhile, the professors are seen with a community of ape men. When the native Indians arrive at the shore and celebrate the death of an ape man, Agnes approaches and greets them. One of the natives declares that whoever killed the ape men is their friend indicating a potential alliance and a glimmer of hope for the rescue of the captured professors. Amidst the danger and excitement of their expedition, Professor George remains committed to his scientific pursuits. He closely observes the behaviors of the ape men they encounter and, in a nod to his own ego, names them Pythocanthropus challengeris. However, the group witnesses a gruesome scene when more ape men return, capturing a native Indian. The ape men brutally kill him with a stone and proceed to eat him. Soon after, they bring another native Indian to the professors, preparing to execute him in a similar manner. At this critical moment, Roxton, accompanied by native Indians, arrives just in time to rescue them, including the man about to be executed. In the ensuing chaos, Roxton and the natives overpower many ape men, but George, recognizing the importance of preserving this new species, halts the killing. Subsequently, the natives capture a few of the ape men and bring them along with the group to their village. There, the village chief expresses gratitude to the group for saving his son who was one of the natives they rescued. The natives, intent on eradicating the ape men from the forest, begin to prepare for a large-scale hunt. The chief then leads the group to a cave, revealing how their ancestors encountered Lois, the mapmaker. George's resemblance to Lois's drawing in an ancient book leads the natives to believe he is a god. They also share the legend of a devil blocking the cave's exit, which the group recognizes as the same blocked exit they encountered, suspecting Theo's involvement. During a meal in the village, Roxton converses with the chief's daughter Marie, with Agnes acting as a translator. Marie explains that she will continue hunting with the men until she marries, as per their cultural tradition. Meanwhile, the chief's son brings an ape man to the village for execution, but George intervenes, asserting the importance of preserving this link between humans and animals. Roxton, however, believes they shouldn't interfere with the natives' customs, though the execution is halted for the time being. Agnes later challenges Roxton's perspective on hunting, urging him to consider the moral implications of his actions and reminding him that unlike animals, humans have the capacity to choose. Over the following weeks, the group adapts to village life. George enjoys his newfound status as a god figure, while Summerlee dedicates himself to creating devices that might facilitate their return home. Roxton earns respect as a warrior, teaching the natives hunting techniques with guns. George takes to feeding the ape men, and Edward continues his documentation through writing and drawing. A romantic bond forms between Roxton and Marie, leading to an engagement ceremony. In a bold move, George returns to the pterosaur's lair and retrieves one of their eggs, adding yet another layer of intrigue and danger to their adventure in the unexplored wilderness. Soon after, an emotional moment occurs when the group and the entire village observe the ape men performing a burial ritual for one of their lost babies.
babies. The ape men carefully place flowers on the grave, indicating a level of cultural ritual and emotion. This discovery piques George's interest, as he becomes increasingly fascinated with studying the ape men's behaviours and societal structures. Meanwhile, Edward confides in Agnes about his relationship with Gladys back in England. Seeking a moment of relaxation, they decide to go for a swim. At the same time, Summerlee makes an attempt to blow open the cave exit using explosives, but his efforts are unsuccessful. Amidst these activities, the ape men George has been observing suddenly start shouting, seemingly calling for help. The chief's son, witnessing this, suggests exterminating all the ape men, but the chief disagrees, showing a level of tolerance towards them. Suddenly, the vibe of the village is shattered as dinosaurs, seemingly summoned by the ape men, invade the area. Edward and Agnes rush to alert the villagers of the impending danger. In a terrifying turn of events, the ape men cover their faces with feces, a tactic that repels the attacking dinosaurs. However, the situation escalates when the ape men seize Edward's knife. In the ensuing chaos, Roxton takes action, loading his rifle and successfully killing one of the dinosaurs to the cheers of the native Indians. However, another dinosaur targets Marie, leading the chief to intervene with a spear. Tragically, the chief is severely injured in the struggle and Roxton is knocked unconscious by the dinosaur's tail. Edward bravely steps in, taking the rifle and killing the second dinosaur, although after missing his first shot. The tension is briefly alleviated when a loud explosion is heard from the cave, signalling Summerlee's success in finally opening the entrance. However, Summerlee returns to find the village devastated by the attack. The chief, gravely injured, passes away, imparting his final words to his son. Realising that their presence is no longer welcomed in the aftermath of the tragedy, the group begins to prepare for their departure. The native Indians, now viewing George as a malevolent figure, start to chase them out of the village. In this escape, Murray decides to join the group, fleeing with them. Amidst the chaos, one of the ape men seizes the opportunity to stab Roxton. The chief's son retaliates, shooting the responsible ape man. As Roxton falls unconscious, Murray stays by his side allowing the rest of the group to escape. The chief's son, recognizing Roxton's condition, calls off the pursuit, leaving the group's fate uncertain as they navigate their way out of the jungle. The dramatic expedition then reaches its climax as the group makes their way through the cave and emerges on the other side of the plateau. There, they encounter Theo, whose mind has been severely affected by a profound realization. Theo has come to believe that humanity is not created in God's image, but is, in fact, a result of evolution from the Ape men. This revelation has driven him to a state of desperation, and he is determined to protect this secret at all costs. Theo plans to seal the cave permanently to prevent anyone else from discovering the truth. However, the group stands in opposition to Theo's intentions, unwilling to allow him to conceal such a significant discovery. The situation escalates when Theo, driven by his idea to suppress the truth, points a gun at the group. In a struggle to disarm Theo, he is accidentally killed. Following this tragic incident, the group waits for Roxton's return. However, days pass without any sign of him. Eventually, people from the mission station find the group and safely escort them back to England. Upon their return, McArdle, Edward's boss at the Daily Gazette, is overjoyed, as Edward's account of the expedition promises substantial profit. But Edward's personal life takes a turn when he discovers that Gladys is now engaged to another man. Shortly thereafter, George holds a large lecture to share the expedition's findings. He presents a baby pterosaur, hatched from the egg he previously took from the lair, and names it after Summerlee. The event takes an unexpected turn when the pterosaur, startled by camera flashes, escapes through a window. In a significant decision to protect the plateau's inhabitants, Edward and Summerlee persuade George to claim that the entire expedition was a fabrication. This selfless act is aimed at safeguarding the dinosaurs and the villagers from potential harm and exploitation. As a result, George sacrifices his reputation and scientific recognition for the greater good. After the lecture, Summerlee returns to his family life, while George sets off on a new adventure to find Atlantis. Edward and Agnes, having developed feelings for each other, acknowledge their love. Edward decides to pursue a career as a novelist, inspired by their incredible journey. In a heartwarming twist, the final scene reveals that Roxton is indeed alive, having chosen to live peacefully with Marie and the villagers, away from the public eye.